everyone. My name is Mary Nickel. I work with Greenpeace. My name is Curtis Dangler. I also work with Greenpeace. Hello. Hi. Hi, Aliyah. It's great to have you with us. Can you can you uh, do whatever magic you did last time where we started hearing you clearly? Okay, well, we'll do we'll do our best. First of all, I just wanted to uh, let you know that we're joined here by. Hey, Aaliyah, it's Mary Nickel. It's great to hear your voice. Hi, it's Curtis from Greenpeace here in Seattle. So we have we have two activists from Greenpeace here with us. Uh, in you know in the office, this is Seattle City Hall in downtown Seattle. We're also joined by several members of the media, and uh, I really appreciate that. And we have uh, City Hall staff here with us. Everyone's excited to hear from you. Can you first tell us who, who all is there? Who, who are you joined by? Aliyah. Uh, I just want to read out the names of the activists who are there. It's Aliyah, Zoe, Andreas, Jens, Miriam, and Jono. Is that right? Aliyah, uh, Having Having, having uh, concluded that you all are doing well, which we are very happy to hear about, can you tell us uh, why all you six volunteers decided to do this? And what are what are we what is the environmental movement hoping to achieve? Uh, well, we're here because uh, Shell already has demonstrated a terrible track record in going to various locations and devastating communities and environments around the world. Just three years ago, in the Arctic itself, it nearly uh, nearly avoided a huge disaster, um, and now they're trying to go back up there and do it again, and we feel very strongly that the, that Shell needs to stay out of the Arctic if we have any hope of avoiding the worst effects of climate change. Thank you for saying that. And from what we hear, uh, you all are, are a truly international team, that's correct, right? That's correct, yes. Um, I'm from the U.S. and we also have a New Zealander, an Australian, uh, a woman from Austria, another from Sweden, and a uh, German by way of Indonesia. So, in other words, the issue of the Shell company drilling in the Arctic is not only something that's uh, important for the people of Seattle and the Puget Sound, but clearly it's an internationally important issue. Yes, it is most certainly a global issue. The Arctic, the, the health of the Arctic affects all of us. If we drill for oil in the Arctic, the whole planet will suffer. Right. And and obviously the you know the question about uh, fossil fuel burning and climate change, you know, that's obviously a burning question. But there is another question also, which is the possibility of oil spills in the Arctic. Can you talk about that? The possibility of what in the Arctic? I'm sorry? Oil spills. Oil spills. Yes, well, the possibility of oil spills, uh, according to Shell's own scientists, are incredibly high, and the ability that they have to contain and clean up such a spill uh, has been proven to be essentially uh, non existent. Uh, and the fragile and isolated class of the Arctic simply cannot handle such a spill. Right. And uh, I'm sure you were aware that the majority of the people in Seattle are completely against uh, any kind of drilling in the Arctic and have been building a movement on the ground. And 
they've been a uh, uh, presence at the port meetings, uh, really uh, strenuously protesting what's been happening. And uh, also, one of the most exciting things that's happened is the movement is now building support for a flotilla a contingent, can I call that, uh, a, a kayak flotilla, to, uh, to prevent Shell from being able to take its oil rig uh, into the Arctic. How do you feel about all this? Hello. Hi. Uh, sorry, we keep losing you. It's a bit overcast here today, and I don't think I'm going in. Uh, no, no, no worries. You are doing tremendously amazing work for us. No apologies necessary. Um, so I was asking you about the kayak flotilla that is starting to uh, build up in uh, Seattle and the ongoing protest movement. How, tell me how you all feel about the growing, uh, you know, sort of momentum against Shell doing this uh, that's happening in locally in Seattle. How do you feel about that? Uh, do you feel supported by this movement on the ground? And also, what message do you have for the activists on the ground? What what kind of support would you like from us? Uh, well, yes, we definitely feel highly, highly supported and inspired by the movement uh, against Shell that is growing in the video. We have had the opportunity to exchange some video messages already, and it has been a wonderful feeling to uh, have uh, such a connection from such a distance. Uh, and we are or with you in spirit, uh, maybe we'll show you in person in these days. Uh, and until then, I uh, hope that we can continue to build the movements and join them together and create a hugely loud chorus that Shell cannot ignore. I completely agree about that, uh, especially about the hugely loud chorus that we need to build that will force Shell to uh, stop ignoring us and really, uh, you know, go by the people's will. And I think Greenpeace did, has, has done a wonderful service to not only the environmental movement, but all of us living beings by posing this as an issue of the people versus the Shell Corporation. And I think that is the pivotal point we need to highlight, that uh, these oil corporations, big oil, is completely tone deaf to the realities of climate change, the realities of the dangers of Arctic drilling, the fact that the majority of people are aware of this and are completely against it, but they're going to do this no matter what in the pursuit of profit. And unfortunately, the Obama administration and the local Seattle Port Administration have completely let us down in a reckless disregard of the needs of the planet and the needs of human society. And it is uh, activists on the ground, ordinary people like all of us, who are going to be building this movement. And uh, we need to re be reminding everybody that this is the people versus Shell Oil. I wanted to share also with you a message that we're bringing on the ground because you know we are uh, building a movement also for economic justice. And we reject this false dichotomy between good jobs and environmental sustainability. As a matter of fact, the Seattle Port uh, Terminal 5 needs to be a working modern cargo terminal that creates living wage unionized jobs, uh, but along with environmental sustainability. And we completely reject, uh, I hope you know that we completely reject the Port of Seattle's argumentation that somehow this is going to benefit jobs and that is why we should be doing this. As a matter of fact, if we want to fight for good jobs and unionized jobs and for environmental sustainability, then we need to continue building this mass movement that highlights the connection between environment and economics. And we're going to be pushing for this as well. We're demanding that the port immediately, the port of Seattle should immediately reverse its decision to give Shell the permission to come to Terminal 5. And we demand that the terminal be returned to uh, being a cargo terminal and just as you all have heroically demonstrated, if the Port of Seattle does not act, 
If the city officials do not act, then the people will act, and we will continue building this movement. I wanted, before you hang up, I wanted to give an opportunity to the Greenpeace folks that are with us to also have a conversation with you, so that you know we can we can make sure we know everybody in Seattle knows what the environmental leadership looks like. Great, thank you, Alia. Can you still hear us? With all, with all the weather. And we're, we're back. Hey, Alia. Hi. Hey, Alia. Sorry, I'm at the end of your message, but I totally agree with everything I'm hearing you say. This is definitely a movement of the people and they are speaking loudly and clearly. Yes. Hey, Aaliyah, it's Mary. Hey, Mary. Hey, so um, I just wanted to share, too, that, you know, um, Shell certainly is afraid of ordinary people taking action to stop that, and so that's what we've been working hard here to do in Seattle with um, allies all over the city, and so the first public moment um, is going to happen on, on April 26th. We're going to have a rally here in town, and so um, if you all are free, we'd love to have you come out and uh, be, be part of the crowd. April 26th. That's right. You're best to be there. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be so inspiring to all the people on the ground. Uh, I, I should tell you, especially young, young people, students, uh, workers in Seattle are really uh, actively, you know, vocally speaking out against Shell, and people are absolutely just stunned at the audacity and the arrogance and the recklessness that with which Shell is pursuing this insanity. But we also have to make sure we call out the elected officials who have failed us at every level, both at the city level and at the federal level. And I think we also need to share the point that. Uh, as long as Shell and corporations in big oil control all these resources, we don't have a say in these backroom deals that they make. You know, we weren't there when they decided to put the future of all our, uh, you know, of our planet and of our, all our lives at stake for their own profits. And the lesson is that we cannot control what we do not own, and these climate-destroying corporations that are pursuing this insanity need to be transferred into democratic public ownership to allow a transition towards clean energy and a massive green jobs program where we can demonstrate that we can create good living wage jobs and maintain the sustainability of the environment. And we reject, as I, I don't know if you, you might have missed it, but I was saying that the people on the ground are rejecting this false dichotomy between jobs and the environment. We're fighting for both. And in order to fight for either, we have to fight against corporations like Shell. So we're going to be continuing to build the movement. April 26th, as Mary said, is a, a very important date for us. We're going to be uh, you know, making sure that we have a huge turnout for that. We're going to provide all support for the kayak flotilla as well. What else can we do to support you? Uh, can we make uh, other contributions? Would you? Would you uh, ask us to use social media and other networks to put the word out. How else can we help you? How else can you help us? Wow. Um, so, yes, any, anything and everything is much appreciated. Uh, getting the word out to as many people as possible um, in person, online, at home, in public, uh, we just need more voices and are so overwhelmed and grateful for the support we've already received. Fantastic. I know you must be exhausted, so we'll let you go, but uh, as parting words, but hopefully we'll see you on April 26th, I'll say that we will be building the movement and we will especially be emphasizing the need for mass uh, non-violent civil disobedience because elected officials have failed us. We have to do this ourselves. And the people of Seattle and the people of this country have to act to stop this insanity. So we look forward to seeing you soon. Keep good health. Take care of yourself. And uh, we're, we're with you in spirit. Great. Thank you so much. We're with you as well.